March 4th. Are we ready to record? Yes, we're ready. Thank you. Okay. All right. I'm opening council time uh, for Wednesday, uh, March the 24th, and we'll be in. <coughs> excuse me. We'll begin with uh, old business and um, approve the minutes of the March 17th council time. Move to approve. Second. It's been moved and uh, seconded to approve the minutes of the last meeting. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, motion passes. Moving on to new business. Staff report uh, on the American Rescue Plan, ARP funds. Kathleen, Mark. This will be uh, led by Mark Gasway and Larry Stafford. They have a staff report to present to you as well as um, the potential concepts for the council to consider as we move forward with receiving the funding. Hey, Mark. Thank you, uh, councilors. Um, before you is a staff report with a few um, combined items on it. As you are all aware, uh, the American Rescue Plan has been uh, signed by President Biden, and that is going to make available um, some significant funding uh, to the county to help um, with to uh, help. Uh, offset the uh, impacts of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic um, beginning uh, this year, and also some, it does have some impact on, on the prior year as well. Uh, so I just wanted to um, just briefly uh, give you some information on what the uh, uh, American Rescue Plan or, or ARP ARP um, does for the county. Uh, first of all, it provides just about $95 million to the county in uh, or makes available uh, that funding. That funding comes actually in, in two tranches. Uh, one would be this year, uh, we would receive that in about uh, May. And then uh, the second uh, half would come next year um, in about at about the same time period. Uh, we would be receiving that money uh, directly as a direct recipient, and uh, that money can be used for various things. And, and I'll kind of uh, uh, have some time available after the staff report for the council to discuss some of those priorities and, and give you some um, guidelines on what those are. Um, I don't know if, if you have any other questions. There's really three things that we're asking for in this staff report. First is um, approval from the council to uh, accept this, the funding and uh, authorize the county manager. There'll be a certification process, just like we did for the um, emergency rental assistance uh, that the county will have to sign and submit to receive the funding. Um, because the, the time frame and the amount of funding that we're receiving, we're actually requesting a position that will help manage this. Uh, this uh, funding will be available beginning May, but it will um, will be able to use it through December of 2024. So we're looking to bring on a, uh, a project management position to help with this funding. Uh, and then the third thing that we're asking for, we would like to be able to track this funding exclusively, and we would like we would create a fund fund 1041, which is a special revenue fund to track all of it. So we're asking really for three things, approval to receive the funding, a, a position to help manage the, the funding, and then a fund to put the money in. So any any questions on, on this specifically? Yes, I, I had a question about the position. It's a, will the funding that is being provided pay for this position? Y yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, are there questions, other questions of the council? Well, <clears throat> I only had a question on, on the new position. And it's so somewhat disappointed that we don't have the in-house capacity to manage this, but I fully understand the enormity of this increased uh, flow of money and the need for a new position. How do you structure it though? Uh, because everything we do now with the short-term money, even though it's multi-year money, 
needs to be sustainable uh, beyond the loss right. of that money. So how do we structure this new position? Does it just simply go away? Is it a, a contract position for a set period of time? Uh, what, Correct. What do you envision? Yeah, it would be an 18 month position that would handle the, it, it's basically the same kind of concept that we do when we receive grant funding and the grant is for a specific time period. This would this position would also be a specific time period. And and just real real briefly, let me uh, speak to the reason why we're requesting that. As you recall, last year when we received CRF funding, we were able to um, I, I would call it shift resources, and we had some expertise in house that was able to manage the CRF funding. However, um, Larry Stafford, who is our also our audit services manager, has a full time job as well. And we we felt it was necessary. They need to get back on track. There's a lot of things that are in there, um, in, in, in that are that are being asked of them, and to manage this full time because this will be a full time job. It, it it really will demand a lot of attention to make sure that this funding is spent correctly. The reporting requirements. Uh, there's a lot of things that we'll need to do with this sp specific grant. So. Yeah, th thanks, Mark. It all makes perfect sense. Um, I so I support all three. Thank you. Other questions of the council? Okay, if there are no, uh, are you looking to have this approval right now, today? Y yes, please. Okay, so I would entertain a motion to that effect. He's asking for three things to be approved. I move that we accept the ARP funds. Uh, the uh, approve the program manager to position and authorize the special revenue fund creation. Second. It's been moved and seconded um, to um, do the aforementioned things. Is there further discussion? Hearing and seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Mm -hmm. Thank you. Motion passes. Thank you very much, uh, Mark. Um, Chair. It. Yes. One of the things that I did uh, hope to spend just a few minutes on was getting a little bit of direction from council. As you know, um, there are some parameters that this funding allows us to do. And um, Rebecca, maybe you could bring up. I emailed you some of the the. Uh, Kind of broad guidelines. What what I would like to be able to do, Council, is begin the work that will um, help you and and help staff move forward on these things. And so, yeah, let's look at this. I have a uh, document here that gives us some guidelines of how this funding can be used. And. I wanted to you know, give you some recommendations, but receive some guidance from council so that we can structure uh, this program. So th this document just tells you what those eligible uses are. And as you know, with the CRF um, funding that we received, we were able to pay for expenses that were associated with, with the coronavirus. This funding actually expands upon that and allows us to do a couple of things. One, it allows us to recover any revenues that we lost due to the pandemic. And um, it also allows us to do some other things as well. And some of those things you're familiar with that we did with the CRF. So I guess the guidance that I would like from you is, is, is that where the council is headed? Would you like to see what those um, what it, what it, what the revenues that we lost that we would like to recover first, look at the expenses that we're anticipating because I'm getting requests from departments every day about can we use the ARP money for this or can we use the ARP money for that? For example, um, looking at uh, a request from IT because because the courts have taken so long to do some of their cases, they're looking for additional storage capacity um, so that they can continue to store that data um, for uh, to make sure that they're able to do their cases. You know, that's one example. 
Um, another example is, you know, DCS, they, you approved a uh, housing coordinator position. They would like to be able to extend that another 12 months using this funding. So for, uh, from a council standpoint, what would you like to see us structure so that you're able to make some of these decisions? Does that make that, does that make sense what I'm asking? Does it make sense, council? <laughs> okay, so, so again, hey, uh, no, I think Mark's gonna go there. I was just gonna suggest that maybe he provides some examples for the council's consideration and your thought process as you're thinking about this. Thanks, Mark, go ahead. Okay, so, so for example, the recommendations that I, would like you to consider, you know, the first would be that we do an analysis of the lost revenue and the uh, potential lost revenue. That would be our highest, one of our highest priorities. The second priority would be to look at the expenses for the ongoing response to COVID. And then third, there is going to be funding available to do some of the programs that we've done in the past. For example, we were able to do some uh, economic um, support to the community businesses. We were able to do some support to um, rate payers for uh, utilities and things like that. So if 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 you think that those are the priorities that you would like me to list, I can put those kind of in order where those dollar amounts might lie, and then um, give that to you for your approval. If if that if you think that that is the best process. Uh, there's a lot of different ways we could use this. I'm, I'm sure you'll be receiving, you know, community input from various um, organizations uh, on ways this might be spent. Um, th there's a lot of money involved, and there's a lot of other money outside of the ARP money that we'll receive. There's there's millions of dollars that are coming in, as you know, our um, Emergency rental assistance program has already received 30 million and it's likely to have another 30 million. Uh, there's a mortgage assistance program that will be coming along. There's infrastructure programs that'll be coming through the state for broadband, for water, for um, all of these different programs that we have will have access to. And so again, one of the reasons we're looking for program managers to help sort through all of this and help you know where these different funding streams are, how we can best uh, leverage them. So if, if you think that that's the right direction for me to take, then I'll begin putting those, um, those, those lists together and my recommendations on how we prioritize those things. Madam Chair. Councilor Bell. I, I think that sounds just terrific. Uh, that would give it some structure that is needed and particularly with your pointing out the areas of overlap with additional monies coming in so that there is an awareness of that um, just so that the, the funds are allocated um, appropriately in the, on, in, the, in the bigger sense of the word. Um, in addition, uh, I don't see listed there uh, loss of funds relative to roads and the jail and i would hope that those two uh, items were included in um, that look at lost revenues yeah yes yeah, so i have a i have a list probably a dozen different lost revenues uh due to the pandemic and all of those are eligible so it, it might not specifically spell it out in, on on this slide that you're looking at but all of those revenues that ha were impacted by the COVID pandemic are eligible. So we're trying to look at a comprehensive list. In fact, just yesterday, somebody came up with an, one that I hadn't thought of before. And, and so all of the, and that was in, uh, in, in our public health, our environmental health fees. Clearly those were impacted by the pandemic. Um, no food handlers permits. We weren't able to do um, the, uh, the restaurant inspections. So there's there's things that are coming up all the time that if you look at the the guidelines here, um, those will become uh, eligible revenues that we can we can replace. So 
So that's hey, excellent. Madam, it's it, that this okay. is so much money that it's an interesting uh, challenge to deal with, and it's important that we do it right. So thank you. Thank you. Council Madpaji. Thank you. Uh, so not not to hit on too many points that we've already hit on, but Mark, I, I think this is an opportunity for us that we need to invest in the process on how we pursue it. So uh, this is the right process. So I heartily endorse it because, you know, there when we replace money into the general fund, that may create other opportunities. We have some long term uh, deficits, if you will, from capital investment and repairs to the jail, uh, to public defense, to broadband. I mean, there's a whole array of public policy advancements that we haven't been able to get to. Uh, and this may give us an opportunity to look at how we can get to them. Uh, and basically going back to my previous comment about the new position, I mean, no matter what we do, it has to be sustainable. So we can't put things in place that are <laughs> that we won't be able to support in the future uh, by our uh, normal budget. So I think the process here is critical uh, as we look at how to move forward uh, with receipt of these monies. So uh, I'm all in favor of what you're doing and what you're proposing. I, I think we need to just keep focusing on the process and all of these broad areas that we hope to address. So, so councilors, would you like to put a work session on the agenda just to once I have this compiled to come back so that you can discuss this and maybe bring in some of those um, uh, other departments in our organization to to talk about this? Would that be uh, something that you would like to do? Madam Chair? Yes, Councillor Lance. Um, to answer Mark's question uh, first, I'd be in favor of that. And just to add on, I, uh, I also appreciate this approach and think it's a good start. Um, something that might be helpful both for this upcoming work session, should we do it, and uh, just in general as we work through this, is uh, some more information about those other funds uh, where where the uh, American Rescue Plan has money that isn't necessarily coming directly to us to determine how to distribute so that we can better understand um, those other sources of funding, but also where we may be able to help meet gaps. Something that comes to mind is we know that there is additional money separate from this uh, for rent assistance. Uh, I'd be interested to know if community services feels that will get us to where we need to get or will we need additional help things like that sure. so that we can understand um also if we want to put money forward on broadband what are the other sources of funding for broadband those sorts of things right. um uh and just to as we move forward and so this is to you and to other uh departments you know we do have the opportunity here to make some um really strong strides forward uh to get us out of the backward place that we've been um, and to also keep in mind that we can do some real good for the community here. So I'm very interested in hearing about, um, in addition to revenue replacement and covering expenses, um, how we can think broadly about how to really move our community forward here and use these funds to the best of our abilities. Yes, we need to be able to sustain whatever we do. Uh, we also have the opportunity here to develop pilot projects to determine where and how we may be able to target assistance for our communities. We may be able to uh, develop a capital project that we could figure out how to support uh, operationally moving forward. There's an opportunity here to be creative and I hope we'll hear some suggestions that allow us to get there. Thank you. Great. So uh, my final comment would be, yes, I think a work session would be wonderful. And, uh, you know, so that we, we can have, we can have questions answered and things clarified for us with these funds. I do want to uh, make a cautionary note. It sounds like um, we may be getting ahead of ourselves a little bit in what we can do with other general fund monies that would also be ongoing just because we have this backfill money. This is about 
supposedly about COVID. So Correct. it's it's not about having a bunch of extra money that will release other money. This is about replacing what we've lost from COVID. So I think we should be very, very cautious about how we move forward with anything else in our general fund. So um, a work session will be helpful so that we can fully discuss and understand what it is we're doing here. So we're not um, uh, burdening, putting a more burden in the future after 2024 on our general fund budget that we cannot at all meet. So um, yes, right. structure will be great, Mark. Is, it, it, could we, is there a date available? I don't know who, who would uh, have that information, but that would give me a target time, maybe out two weeks or, or at least two weeks. I'm not sure who, who has that calendar, so. Staff will look at that after this morning's meeting and we'll communicate with you today. Okay, great. Great, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks. Let's see, moving on to, I've got my, Get my agenda back here. Um, uh, a request for proclamation, poetry month. Good morning, Council. So uh, we received a request from the Clark County Arts Commission to designate April as um, what they talked about as National Poetry Month. Obviously, we would just be designating it as Poetry Month in Clark County. Um, in the past, we have um, done a proclamation regarding the designated poet laureates, but we have not done a proclamation regarding poetry month. So I wanted to bring this to the council to see if this was something that you were interested in. Um, what you see before you is the language that was proposed by the arts commission. Um, you're of course welcome to change that if you do wanna move forward, but wanna make some changes. Um, and if you do wanna move forward, we can get this on the calendar for the April 6th hearing. What's your pleasure council? I'd support moving this forward. How could any one of us be against poetry? We certainly need that now after this past year of 2020. So I, I fully support it. And I, I, I look forward to meeting our new poet laureate as well. Hey, uh, we'll put this uh, on for April. If you have any changes, get them to let Lindsay in uh, due time, since it's gonna be on, did you say April 4th, 6th? I don't have a calendar in front of me. Anyway, in April, since April, the first meeting, uh, our first hearing of April. So, okay, moving on. Thank you. You're welcome, thank you. Uh, moving on to uh, council reports. Okay, moving on to work session requests. Read two funding management update. This will be requested by Mark Gasway and Emily Budzig from the budget office. Good morning, Council. Um, we are here to just request a work session, hopefully set for May 12th, to bring forward information about the REIT 2 fund, give you guys a fund management update and review allowable fund use, and also ask for direction on how um, involved the Council would like to be in decision making and planning for the fund in the future. Yes, I say yes, without objection. <laughs> so I and so uh, thank you, Emily. We'll we'll schedule that. Uh, moving on to the next request would be body cameras. Yes, thank you, Council. Um, this request uh, we do have, we're in the middle of our supplemental budget process right now, and the Sheriff's Office has submitted a um, budget requests for body cameras. As I was talking to some other d internal departments, they while they don't have any formal budget requests now, they were sharing 
um, costs that they will also incur if body cameras are approved. And actually some of them will actually receive or have cost if the city of Vancouver or other jurisdictions implement body cameras. Because of the short timeline on this, um, I am requesting the council to consider having a work session next week um, with some of our internal departments, that includes sheriff's office, the PA, clerk, anybody in the law and justice, um, as well as the finance team and IT. This is not all inclusive. I, I did see an email this morning from Indigent Defense. This is just a preliminary conversation um, internally with the council so that um, while some of these departments may not have done any costing and may not have done their own full analysis, but just to get some of the information going so that you have um, an opportunity to hear from them um, initially, as well as ask for any follow-up um, data questions that you may have um, as you consider this budget request moving forward. This sounds important and like yeah. something we better do. Yep. Yeah, so um, if I heard you correctly, Kathleen, there are other departments that are now popping up saying they're gonna incur additional costs. I hadn't heard that before. So yeah, I'd be interested in seeing if, if what that looks like. Uh, and then I, I did wanna double tap on the issue of stakeholders in this beyond our internal look at additional costs and how we make this happen. Uh, but we, we really do have to have uh, public defense uh, as, a, as a stakeholder to give them an opportunity to weigh in. I, I know you're looking at that now. But we aren't going to have uh, any, uh, public defense moving in on this for this work session because it's going to be next week. So. And, and just to clarify too, Lindsay is the manager right now over Indigenous Defense and she will be involved as well. And I, you know, this is an assumption, but this is under council's purview. There are certainly other opportunities in the future to receive other feedback from other constituents within the community as well as Indigenous Defense. Um, but that's certainly up to your choice. And if you would like to have a representative next week as well, from Indigenous Defense, that's fine. Um, that, that's under your purview. This is, this was just throwing out some of the ones based on my conversations with departments as I'm moving forward with budget conversations right now. That knowing that there are some significant costs incurred internally, there may be some some costs as well with Indigenous Defense as well as our other stakeholders in the community. But we can, I think that's how we how you determine how to move forward with this process and the budget supplemental i think will um, identify your appropriate next steps and what you want to consider so and so madam chair you know if we had a public defender they would be sitting at the table at this next meeting uh, so i i would encourage that we do include uh, with lindsay's help getting that input i i don't know how that best looks um but at least the invite to get the relevant players so we get their, capture their issues right up front and not put it down the road. Yeah, I, I guess if there, uh, if there are costs to be incurred, then I think that we should know about that beforehand. So I, yes. I, I guess they should be, if, if something can be put together by next week, at least some ballpark idea and why I'd like to know that the, you know, foundation behind it as well, but Lindsay. So there's sort of 2 components. Um, 1 is the substantive piece in terms of um, what type of policies we would have around body cameras, how they would be implemented. Um, those, I think, are things that the. Um, the attorneys that actually serve as our public defenders, our contract attorneys, will be very interested in being a part of those conversations. Then there's the second piece, which of course is the county fiscal piece. Um, and that's not really something that our contractors are involved with because that's what we pay for internally. I, I you know, would need to do the analysis further, but I can imagine, for example, right now um, we pay for 
um, investigator services, we pay for the cost of printing of discovery for our contractors. So if there's costs involved like that to produce body cam footage for the defense attorney, there may be some of those costs. It's certainly going to be much smaller than the cost to the sheriff's office. Um, so that I think is more of a, a county conversation to have. Um, so if the work session is really limited to um, the budget piece of it, then I think that that's something for, um, and as Kathleen said, I will be there and I'm happy to answer any of those questions. Um, and uh, we have a couple of the defense attorneys that sort of serve as our liaisons with the defense bar community that I can certainly invite if the, the council would like to have them there and at least available for questions. Um, I know they're interested and so I suspect that uh, some of them will be at least watching anyway just because of the nature of the issue. Okay, so any part of the fiscal piece maybe can I, I, that makes sense. So any part of the fiscal uh, piece that can be included in on this first work session, because I think that's primarily one of the things that that we are trying to address here before we, uh, you know, as we move forward, before we move forward, whatever, whatever we determine to do. So if if that can be accomplished in within a week, at least some ballpark ideas. Okay, uh, let's move on to the next city of Ridgefield, PBS engineering and environmental Inc. I-5 connection project. So uh, council chair, uh, this is Rob Klug. Uh, I believe this is mine. Uh, I, this is a little bit on, on my part, it's a little bit of the cart before the horse where um, the city of Ridgefield is very interested in having a discussion with the council uh, about a proposed road, uh, which is on the arterial atlas that connects from 31st Avenue, pretty much due east west, going towards the northwest 31st Avenue, going towards 219th Street interchange. So, uh, the city of Ridgefield has been asking for this, uh, this request, and I realized this morning that there wasn't a nine step that was uh, submitted. So, I'm in the process of doing that right now to dot our I's and cross our T's. Uh, Apologize for not having that done sooner. Uh, long story short, the city of Ridgefield is very interested in building this road, which is outside the city limits and outside of the urban growth boundary for their proposed, excuse me, their existing land use that's in place that is being developed right now to provide a, a better access for people that are in the city in the south portion of the city to get to the rest of the world. Um, it's a benefit to the county because it would be a county road facilitating uh, circulation, but uh, importantly, it actually, the construction of that road is modeled to show that it's going to reduce the impact of traffic on the 179th Street interchange and on Northwest 31st Avenue, Delphel Road, Northwest 11th Avenue, et cetera. So it's it's going to be better for the community at large. It's not necessarily there to promote growth. It's to resolve existing growth out there. And I don't want to steal their thunder because um, they've got a lot of really good information they want to bring and, and show the council. The reason why we want to talk to the council about it is we've never had a project that I'm aware of where the city of uh, a city wants to pay for the construction of a road outside of their city limits, outside of the urban growth boundary. And so that's gonna take some, some interesting methodology in figuring out how to make that work and set the roles and responsibilities so it's very clear who's doing what. And when we start even just peeling back the onion and looking at some of the details, I was asking questions about, well, how do we acquire right of way? And what happens if we have an unwilling seller? And so uh, it's it it gets it could get very interesting to ferret out all those details, and the the goal would be to have some sort of an interlocal agreement ultimately with the council where we would very clearly define the roles and responsibilities so that we could make sure that everyone understands what we're doing. And I'll, I'll be happy to take any questions. Other questions of the council. I would say we do need a work session on this. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Um, it has the potential of being a great yeah. project. Right, right. It has it, yes, and it sounds like it has some other potential issues, so that we need to iron them out and understand it from the get go. So, yes, ma'am. Anybody objecting to a work session for this? No. Okay. Uh, we'll set a time for that. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Uh, Lindsay, report on policy issues. A couple of things uh, additional for you this morning. One quick update on the legislative front. We did get out the um, letter regarding House Bill 1152. Uh, that's the public health restructuring bill. So that letter was sent out. Um, and I will note, I know that Senator Wilson was, uh, she sent an email to um, Senator Cleveland, who of course is the chair of the healthcare committee, um, it reiterating her concerns regarding House Bill 1152. So um, the discussions on that are ongoing. The hearing in the Senate committee was this morning um, and the bill needs to be voted out of committee by Friday. Um, next topic, this one I was able to touch base with a couple of you about, but wanted to bring it back to council time, the battleground aquatic facility. Um, so we, I, we had the discussion in council time regarding potentially having a meeting with the county council and with this battleground city council and Kathleen and her counterpart, Aaron, um, at battleground and Westby associates. There was a subsequent email exchange and it seems as though there's a smaller group that's going to be meeting to talk about these things first before we have a larger meeting. Um, I wanted to make sure that that is your understanding. That's your desire for moving forward. Um, just want to make sure we're all on the same page with that. Well, I, I am hoping to have that smaller group meeting and I, I think um, I'm hopeful that the chair would want to be part of that and I would want to be part of that. Um, so I, I, ha I haven't done anything to try to set that up as far as the logistics, you know, whether it's uh, the mayor, Adrian Cortez, uh, D'Alessandro, uh, you know, who would represent a battleground and actually come up with a time and place for the Zoom. Uh, but I'm hoping, uh, Madam Chair, that we could have those discussions. Right, I that was my understanding as well. So I guess maybe we should talk, uh, we should have a discussion about who the other participants might be and then uh, ask for um, Kristen to try to set something up once we get her the contact information. What is the purpose of the smaller group meeting? Uh, it can't be decision making, right? Because correct. it is the smaller that's, that's group. correct. So it's what is your purpose? The purpose is it's our purpose to find out basically what battlegrounds view uh, what some of the counselors at battlegrounds view of this, what they have agreed to what they have not agreed to, et cetera. So will all of their uh, no. uh, policy people be there? No. So no. A, a certain group of, the, of them will be representing the whole of the battleground perspective. Uh, I'm assuming so. Yeah, hmm. okay. And and actually that's, a, that's not a good assumption to make since, uh, you know, electeds have their own minds, but yeah. <laughs> it would, it may give us a picture of what has gone on and that that's what we need to know actually at this point. Mm -hmm. And if I can chair, um, yeah. I did have a brief conversation with the city manager from battleground last week and she did confirm that they have made no decisions and no formal action or commitments. Um, she also confirmed that they um, have been having these conversations for quite some time, I think four or five years. Um, so I just want to make that clear that there has been no commitments or decisions made on the city background as of last Friday when I spoke with her. Okay, uh, Gary, maybe you and I can talk about this one more time about how how we should have this meeting. It could be that we actually could have a joint meeting if they would be amenable to that and have the the project explained fully 
and what the expect what the ask is for each uh, each council, and uh, and maybe have our answer there because I do know it has been going on for a long time. I was introduced to it in 2017 when I first came on to the council. So, Madam Chair, uh, who's speaking? Uh, this is Councilor Lentz. Councilor Lentz, go ahead. Uh, um, thank you. No, I um, I appreciate what you just said, and I would hope that um, that would, regardless of who's having the meeting, that that the outcome would be that we would get some of that additional information to help sort of close this loop and if we're going to move forward then figure out how to do it um uh as i recall that had been why we had asked at the last time we talked about this to have all parties come to a, a council time or a work session to talk about it so that we could all get the same information at the same time so um if two of you want to work on that i have no problem with that i just hope that um it doesn't end up being that we're really just creating more meetings and perhaps um, having a joint meeting is a great suggestion uh, that we could all be in the same place at the same time uh, and hear the same information. Um, that would be my my goal in the end and what I thought we were looking for when we talked about it last. Thanks. I guess I got some other information in between time that had me reconsidering so, and and I can talk about that to you, Tempo, after the meeting, if you'd like. Sure, that'd be fine. And I've I've yeah. gotten a a little a little extra too. I just you know if we're talking about outlay of taxpayer dollars, I right. hope that we'll have as I, many of these meetings in public as possible. I I, so. I agree with that. I, I think we were trying to actually glean from the actual people on the council what has been said, not getting it secondhand. But yeah. I, I do not have a problem with having this be a public meeting with all of the, uh, the two, with the two councils and uh, maybe with Westby, if he would like to join because he's the one that um, is uh, attempting, I think, to, to bring this all together. And uh, he's kind of orchestrating who should do what in a sense or making the ask. So that would be helpful too. I think he knows the most about the project. So um, th that doesn't sound like a bad idea to me either. So I, Gary, if you are willing to, to just have this two councils meet together, why don't we just try to do that? Are you okay with that, Gary? Yeah, I, I'm game for anything and I don't want to leave anyone out. I, I think it right. was just kind of a, a truth telling yeah. thing. Uh, yeah. You know, we heard from the consultant and uh, I understood that uh, the parties I mentioned were supportive of the idea, but we need to, you know, yeah. get a narrative going um, and then move it to a public. Okay. If we could have a joint, joint meeting eventually, that would be great. And you know, one of the ideas I had floated out there, but I haven't floated it to battleground yet was, hey, we're, we've got uh, cedars as we're looking at a conservation um, purchase there. Maybe that cedars would be a great location for the YMCA uh, to have their public uh, pool, you know, because they had proposed having a park uh, surround their uh, pool. Uh, so, you know, there, I, th I think just having some kind of a preliminary meeting would would help advance uh, the the issue to get some ground truth on what's going on with the council. I mean, at our battleground council, I mean, we were also told that the prior city administrator had personally committed to this project. And of course, then, you know, we don't know if that's true, but they're gone. They're they have gone. A new city administrator. So I, I think the more meetings we have, uh, would be helpful. So I'd still like to have, you know, if if we don't agree to have kind of a two on two, uh, I I would at least reach out to the mayor personally and and try to talk to him by the phone just to to learn a little bit more. And and that's perfectly uh, acceptable. I I would agree. Maybe that's a good idea. Kathleen, did you have uh, something to say there? I think you had your 
mic off and I think I know what you're going to say. Yeah, well, first of all, sorry about that. I hit the wrong mic button, so it created some feedback. Um, so yes, it was shared with me too that that communication had been said about the prior um, city manager. And of course, the city manager doesn't have the authority to make that decision um, without the council's approval. And that's why I wanted to make it very clear that you no know, commitments have been made. And what I'm hearing is it's kind of like the, the game telephone. I think people are hearing different versions of the same thing, but it's coming out completely different on the other end, but within our own council, as well as differences between other stakeholders that uh, may be involved in the conversation. So for what it's worth, I mean, if, obviously if the council wants to reach out to the city and discuss that with just two of you, I, I think it might be helpful to have everybody in the same room hearing the same thing because there's a lot of rumors and stories and, um, and just so that you can get the facts so you can make the right recommendation moving forward. Okay, I, I would agree. Okay, Lindsay, maybe you can try to orchestrate a joint meeting with the councils and the consultant uh, in the near future. And uh, I actually, when um, Gary mentioned to me the idea of the Cedars, it sounded really great. So uh, since they're, they are going to do something with that, or that's my understanding, man, it could be a real winner. So anyway, could do yes. you think you could handle that, Lindsay? Yes. Yep. Okay. Thank um, you. So the next topic that I had um, is every two years the Department of Commerce makes a designation or asks the county, the uh, either the county council or county commission, to designate the ADO, which is the local economic development organization. Um, and I, I surmise from the council that we're going to be moving forward with three appointing CRADC as the ADO. I know I've touched base with um, you individually on that, or at least most of you individually on that. Um, there was some interest from the council in possibly inviting uh, Jen Baker to either a council time or a very short work session to kind of get an update from them. This is something we've done in the past, but we don't have a recurring schedule. Uh, so I wanted to bring that forward to see if that was something there was um, broad council support to do, and then we could invite them. Councillors, what do you think about that? Yes, I think that's a good idea. And in that conversation, we can uh, talk about some of the methods that they will be using for uh, for the development and, and how they'll carry out that role this time around of the ADO. So it would be very good. Okay, without objection, then uh, we will do that. I, it was Okay, go ahead. Um, the last topic that I have, um, we had a council time conversation a few weeks back regarding um, a constituent that had reached out to at least a couple of you um, uh, for how we can best serve those in our community that are deaf or have uh, hearing issues and wanted to let you know that staff had a meeting with, uh, with him and that we're going to be having another internal staff meeting here this week to talk about um, what of the suggestions that he made that we might be able to implement, how we would go about actually implementing them, um, became clear from our, our initial meeting that there's probably more people that we needed to get involved um, just from IT and, and others in terms of how we would run the council meetings and things like that. Um, and that he also has a number of other suggestions. And so we're going to be scheduling a couple of follow up meetings with him to let him know kind of what First, you know, what we are doing on the basis of his initial suggestions and then also to hear some other suggestions that he has. So just wanted to give you an update that we're, we're working behind the scenes to hopefully see um, if we can implement those in the near future. And that's all I had. Okay. Thank you, Lindsay. Um, all right. We are now going to move into executive session and we are going to have 10 minutes on collective bargaining, one pending lit litigation, uh, RCW 4231101I for 10 minutes, two potential litigation, 4231101I for 20 minutes with potential action afterwards. So, 
Uh, we will adjourn this meeting. We will sign in to our um, executive session meeting. And if there is action after uh, this executive session, we will sign back in or, or do we sign out? Uh, um, Kathleen, do we sign out? Or, yeah, I guess we would. And sign back in. Yes, you will sign in, sign out of this one, go into executive session. If there's action, you'll leave that one and return to this webinar. Okay, yes, okay. All right, all right. So I'll see you on the other side, guys. We're adjourned until possible action. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs>